Hey there, CFC family and friends. I'm so excited about life groups and I trust you have a great time together as you gather. Whether you are new to the Christian Family Centre or you've been coming along for ages, life groups of how we can belong together in Jesus' family, grow more like Him and encourage each other. So have the best time as you meet together this week. Well, this week we're finishing off our baptism series and looking uh, particularly at water baptism. You might have been baptised in water, um, might have been a long time ago, might have been in the last couple of years, or you might be in a, one of our life groups and thinking, you know what, I've sort of heard a bit about water baptism, I'm not quite sure what it is, I'm not sure if I'm ready, I'm not sure if it's for me. There can be lots of questions around it. But we specifically wanted to look at it because it's such an important um, mark of obedience and discipleship as we follow the Lord. Um, so for those of us who were baptised, you know, I, I think mine was 21 years ago or something like that, but I just still remember how powerful it was to publicly stand up and declare my faith in Jesus. The thing I want us to just start by remembering is that with water baptism, Christ went first. Jesus went first. He who knew who had no sin, who was not ever, had never done anything wrong, he went first and actually got baptised. And John the, John the Baptist recoiled at the thought, you know, how can, how can I baptise you, Jesus? I'm not even unworthy to tie, untie your sandals. Um, but Jesus, you know, said, no, this is actually what's supposed to happen. <laughs> this is how it should be. Um, this is what we're supposed to do. And so it says in Mark uh, chapter 1, verse 9, At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And we see this beautiful, um, almost like bursting out of, of love and expression from God the Father where he just can't, can't help himself but say, This is my son whom I love and in him I am well pleased. And it's so good to be reminded that because Jesus went first, not just in getting baptised, but in you know, his death and resurrection on our behalf because he initiated and moved towards us when we wanted nothing to do with him, because he took on our sin even when he had no sin. Um, we have access to God as our Father. We can know him personally. That's just awesome because Jesus has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. And what is said of Jesus the Father now says of us as his adopted kids, you are my son or my daughter who I love and in you I am well pleased. He is well pleased with you because of Christ's perfect A plus record on your behalf that he's now given to you. He is well pleased with you. If you think that God's angry with you or that he's disappointed in you, no, he is well pleased with you. He loves you and he so loves that you're part of his family. The other thing that um, I was really thinking about this week about baptism is it's this beautiful symbol of uh, outward symbol of the new life that we have with Jesus and the new power that's now in operation in our lives because we can't actually follow Jesus without the Holy Spirit. We can't just outwardly behave and modify ourselves enough to be good Christians because we're not perfect. We actually need the empowering of the Holy Spirit to follow Jesus. And it's such a relief to know that he's given us his spirit. And water baptism not only symbolises the fact that we're now publicly saying, I'm a follower of Christ, you know, I, I love him, I don't care who knows it, but it's saying, I acknowledge that Christ has transformed me. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation, brand new, never before existed. <laughs> the old has gone and the new has come. This new life of personal intimacy with Jesus, this new life of um, being, out of, being able to say no to sin by the power of the Spirit and say yes to the things that honour God. And more and more, day by day, we are transformed into his likeness. We're conformed into the image of God's Son. Isn't that awesome? It's so good to remember that, that 
you know, maybe you've been a Christian for a while and, um, and sometimes your Christian walk can feel dull or dry. I just invite you and encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to reinvigor, to revive that first love that you had for Jesus, to refill and refresh you um, because following him is this amazing amazing adventure yes there's highs <laughs> yes there's deep lows but he has promised to never leave us or forsake us so Christ went first there's this new power and this new life that we have with Jesus that yes culminates in eternity but starts now and we have with water baptism it's like a wedding ring I've got a wedding ring <laughs> my husband and I exchanged rings when we got married 20 years ago and this ring were the things that we gave to one another to symbolise our commitment to one another. As when we look at these rings, we're reminded, oh, that's right. I'm not that we, we forget that much, but <laughs> it's a great reminder. I am committed to my husband. He is committed to me. I have received his pledge of, of love until you know, my final breath on this earth and he has pledged his love to me. And so it's a symbol of that. And so water baptism is like that too. It's this beautiful symbol this outward symbol of our commitment to Jesus, but also of a reminder of his great love for us, that he would do that, he would die and rise again for us. Lastly, this week in our life groups, I'd love us to just think and reflect about how water baptism really is the first big step of trust and obedience. Obviously, it's not the thing that makes us a Christian. We... we give our lives to Jesus based on what he's done for us as a, a gift of grace. But to stand up publicly when not many people like speaking publicly, <laughs> to share our testimony and to say, I am willing to undergo water baptism because I trust Jesus and I want to follow him, that is powerful. And it's an evidence that we're his followers. In Matthew 28, Jesus himself said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. How's the trust and obedience factor going in your life? Is Jesus saying to you, come and talk to me about this. Look up some scriptures with me. I want you to get baptised in water to say that you're mine, that you're a follower of mine. But maybe if you have been baptised, are there some areas of trust and obedience that you can look back and think of when you got baptised and, and use that as a way to stir your faith and remind you that the life of following Jesus is an adventure. It's a life of trust and obedience. Where is he calling you to surrender afresh to him this week? Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this uh, reminder about the importance of water baptism. I pray for any who are considering it, that you would move upon their hearts and, and show them, uh, open their eyes, help them understand your teaching and the scriptures that talk about water baptism. I pray for any who have been baptised in water, that we wouldn't just see it as one stake in the ground from a long time ago, but it would stir up and remind us of uh, this beautiful first love that we had for Jesus and that you're still calling us to a life of trust and obedience. Move powerfully in our groups in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.